I don't know if I'll be able to show you, but we have got a pod of dolphins that's following me around. Every time I stop the boat to try and start fishing, they're all coming around with maybe on boat. Anyway. Well, good morning. Welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's incredible already. Playing with dolphins this morning. I've only been out for 10 minutes. What I'm going to be doing is, it is a lovely day. I'm hoping to be able to feather up some fresh bait. I don't know if these dolphins are going to let me. I'm hoping to feather up some fresh bait and then we're going to go and try and catch some cuttle, some squid, some octopus. And then depending where the day goes, we may end up anchoring up somewhere, I don't know. We're just going to see where the tide takes us. At the moment the dolphins are corralling all the pilchards right up to the surface. I'm after mackerel. Let's see if I can turn the boat around for you to see. This is where they all are out here. So that's the plan. Well, that's what's down there, little tiny joeys. Do with a few big ones to be honest. <laughs> Those ones are perfect for live bait. That's a couple of better ones. There you go. Keep the big ones and the little ones separate. The big ones I'm going to use as hook baits and the little ones I might use as live baits. All I'm using is just a set of little tiny sabiki hooks. God, there's dolphins everywhere. Everywhere you look you can see them. Must be at least 30. I've crushed the hooks of these sabikis to try and make them easier to unhook because there's quite a lot of little tiny ones around. You also are coming to a problem there though that it's easier for the fish to get off. I've crushed the barbs on the sabikis. It's just little tiny sabikis that I'm using and I've crushed the barbs on them so it's easy to get the fish off. So if I'm catching lots of little tiny joeys I can release them. Like that. So when it's little tiny ones like that One's foul hooked, I'm gonna have to keep him. Oh. There, actually, those are pilchards, Cornish sardines. Yeah, look, that's how big the sabikis are. Let's 
get out there. Oh. Don't need many more strings of them to get to get bait, do you? Perfect live bait size. Put one back for good luck, keep the rest. What I'm actually going to do is I have reached the area where I'm going to fish for a couple of octopus. Put that one back as well. And there was just a shoal going past and I thought I'll give it a try. Now what I've got is I've got a long sandy bar. And what I've got is I've got just some generic cheap <coughs> squid jigs. And I've tied them in a two down tandem rig, like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rig them like a two down rig. Just like that. And put a six ounce lead on. But what I do is, taking some little strips of mackerel, like this, some of the fresh mackerel I've just caught. As if you lash it to the back. If you lash it to the back of the squid jig, I've found a cuttle and octopus. When they get rolled with the jig, there aren't any hooks on them, just these backward facing barbs. When they get hold of a hard lure, they can let go of it. And what they do is, when they get rolled of this, and they can feel and they can taste meat, this is what I think anyway, when they feel and they can taste mackerel flesh, they hang on. Because to them, they don't understand what a squid jig is. They probably just think, oh, I've got hold of a mackerel and it's trying to get away. So they hang on longer. Ooh, that residual swell's still hanging about, isn't it? Right. There they are. Ready to go. For any of you who've watched my other videos when we've been live baiting, using a live bait mackerel or a live bait pollock or a live bait pilchard, cuttlefish quite often smash up live baits when you're fishing them near the bottom. So live baiting is also another good way of catching cuttlefish. All you have to rely on is, when you're fishing, I've got a live bait on this rod and I've got my squid jigs on the other rod. The live bait's just off the bottom and the squid jigs are just bumping along it. And what you're looking for is you're not looking for on the rod tip you're not looking for like like a bite like that all it's going to happen is it's just going to get heavier instead of being a, a bite it's just going to get heavier and then all you do is you just wind it in gently if you wind it in too rough it'll just come off and you'll know if it was a cuttle or an octopus because it'll be heavy and all of a sudden it'll let go and it'll be real light the trick is, is that if you can get them up alongside the boat, don't try and lift them out of the water straight away. Scoop them up with the net. Because as soon as you try and lift them out of the water, they'll usually try and dart away and that's when they can pull off. Hopefully I'll be able to show you. But another, th <laughs> another thing what you shouldn't do too quickly, don't be too eager to get them in the boat. Because chances are, if you've taken them just out of the water, they'll have some water in them and they'll eject ink everywhere. It's like a, it's like a holy hand grenade of ink, of ink. Just goes everywhere. So scoop them up in the net, hold them in the net, let them jettison the ink, then lift them aboard and get them in a bucket. Let's get another rig tied up. You see how this rod's just got heavier? This is what I'm talking about. There's just a weight on there now. Feel it lunging back a bit. Now look. 
just dropped off at the right moment. There's a big octopus. Look at the size of that. Oh, he's a monster, isn't he? Exactly as designed, and I tell you, just just gets heavy. Just got heavy, didn't it? Just wound it in gently. Let's fill that bucket full of ink now. Wound it in gently, and then kept it under the water, scooped it up with the net. More like a proper bite that. Yeah, that's all the rig was, look. Exactly as I told you. Two down rig with two squid jigs with a little bit of mackerel on. The reason that I cast out is because you want them a little bit of a distance away from the boat so that they're bumping along the bottom rather than bouncing up and down. And like you say, you just need to be gentle with them. Tide's turning now. See how it's spun the boat round. Try and show you here. That's the colour of the water in there now. Completely black. On the white rod at the back, I've got one single jig. For squid, you have to fish them slightly differently. Squid, generally, you won't catch them right on the bottom. After we've caught a couple more of these, we might go and try for a squid. There's another. Now that one there, oh. <laughs> it's just spat water on me. That one there shows you how the jig works. Right. When you're getting hold of them, octopus and cuttlefish, you're better off getting hold of them around the body and the head like that. Because if you can see that, the centre of there, in the centre of here, there is a beak. If it gets that on your skin, it'll bite you and it'll hurt. Look how sticky they are. Yep, well he's definitely been hit. Look at that! <laughs> Not a live bait anymore, is he? Nearly been bitten in half. Yep. Off. See what I mean about how it was heavy and all of a sudden it come light. 
just because it's chopped off. That's exactly what it's going to be. It'll just start getting heady. And then them couple of little lunges will be like the octopus trying to swim back to the bottom. There is a coral fish. There you go, it's a coral fish. Now I don't know if you saw that at the corner of the camera then. Just as I went to lift it out of the water, it just went and squirted a great load of ink. There you go. Now these guys, see how sticky they are? These guys are fantastic at changing colour. Again, a little beak on the inside of there, that if it gets it on you and it bites you, it really will hurt. You right? If it had any water in him then, that would have been a jet of water. It doesn't hurt to give them a little bit of time. Because it'll let them properly get hold of it and let them taste a little bit of that, that mackerel meat. Go. Well, that was all that is. Look, just a single jig. There's the other one. See how quickly they change colour. Look, it's gone dark now, hasn't it? Incredible creatures. And I do believe there's one on here as well. Oh, don't start being a nuisance. Squirted ink everywhere now. Yeah, there's one on it. That's just dropped off. That live side, that live sardine now isn't going to be a live bit anymore. Filled itself full of water now. What they've done. Is they have a sack inside their body that holds really con there look. I'll show you the difference now look, watch him change. See him change dark. The jet comes from that little tube underneath there. Better fishing for these on neap tides, which are the small tides. Just because it means you have a really slow drift. Keep letting go. See the bait on that back one there, being smashed up. Got 
one on the white rod. They're finicky now. Sometimes you get them, like if you get a big female, she'll just hang on. She'll strike a live bait and get a hold of it and you could wind her all the way in and lift her up like that and she won't let go. Another time you can get them and they'll be real finicky. But they live, they live in little patches on the seabed. Little crevices under a rock in a little defilade. They just live in little bits of like the sandy bottom. Sand, pebble, shell, merle, that type of thing. And all I'm doing is I'm dragging these lures or these baits right across in front of their house. I might go back and do that drift again. We're drifting at 0.3 knots. Perfect. anymore <laughs> ah well <laughs> look absolutely destroyed it try again One there chasing it. As we're drifting along, it must keep coming up and getting hold of it, coming up and getting hold of it. Because every now and again, you see it hold up and go. If you don't land them all, quite a lot of them will drop off. Just part of the nature of it. It's just dropped off where I could see it was an octopus. Another octopus. That's annoying. He <laughs> got it all the way up to the surface and dropped off. Fishing in 70 feet of water now. <laughs> well, it's not a cool fish. <laughs> it's not what I was expecting. Some big ones down there because I can feel by the weight, but they're just not hanging on. Got you. Another big octopus. There we go. Some big ones today, haven't we? Now, you can eat octopus, you can eat cuttlefish, you can eat squid. Very tasty when it's cooked properly. It's also fantastic winter bait. 
conger, for ling, for cod. I wouldn't mind a few small cuttlefish. The males are generally like the size of your fist. The females get really big. Another inquiry. There we are, we've reached the end of the session now. We have had a lot today. I've got six cracking octopus. Some of them are really big ones. Size, oh, size of these guys. And two cracking cones. Now the, po the population of octopus in my local, I'm sorry, I was just covered. The population of octopus in my local area has absolutely exploded over the last couple of years. There are loads of them. I must have lost about 10 today. Now uh, you can eat these, you can eat octopus, you can eat cuttle, you can eat squid. We did try for a squid for a couple of hours, but it is a little bit early for them to be honest. Maybe in a couple of weeks time we might be able to come back and go for some squid. But, um, these are going to be bait for big fish. I'm planning on doing a trip soon and catching some big, big fish. I'm not going to tell you too much, but this is the bait for them. I think it's brilliant. Excellent bait for, uh, for a range of species. Cod, conger, they love it. Anyway, I hope this has been interesting for you. All I was using today was I was just using these little jigs. Fished on a two down rig on the bottom for squid and octopus, and then you fish them further up in the water column for squid. I hope this has been interesting. All the best. We'll see you later.